If you're interested in becoming a pilot and thinking what pilot license you should go for, in this video, I'm going to answer four common questions from new student pilots. What pilot license should you choose? What can you do with the particular license? How much does the flight training cost? And where should you start? Hey what's up guys, my name is Jane, I'm a flying instructor in Australia. Ever since I started instructing, most new students ask me what pilot license they should choose and how much the flight training costs. Let's start with what pilot licenses are available in Australia and what you can do with that particular license. The first license is Recreational Pilot License RPL. It's introduced on 1st of September 2014. LPL replaces the Student Pilot License and General Flying Progress Test GFPT, that existed under the Civil Aviation Regulations 1988. With LPL, you can fly single-engine light aircraft by yourself or you can carry passengers within 25 nautical miles of your departure aerodrome. In order to get RPL, you need to be at least 16 years old, complete the flight training which included at least 25 hours flying time, those are 20 hours of dual time with an instructor and 5 hours of solo time by yourself. The flight training is basically general handling of the aircraft, such as strain level, climbing, descending, turning, takeoff, landing, etc. and mini navigation in the training area. Also, you need to take a general English language assessment, pass a theory exam and a flight test, then you'll get the recreational pilot license. You can get endorsements or add-on for your RPL. I will talk about that in separate video for all pilot licenses. If you're interested, please subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any new videos. The second license is Private Pilot License PPL. With PPL, you can fly an aircraft as pilot in command or co-pilot in a private operation. You cannot get paid for the flying. It is sort of an extension or add-on from RPL with navigation training. So normally students will go through the RPL training first, then move on to the PPL training which is the navigation exercise. To get the PPL, you need to be at least 17 years old, complete the flight training. As I said, students will do RPL first, then transit to PPL. The flight experience needs to be at least 40 hours for non-integrated training course and 35 hours for integrated training course. I mentioned what integrated training is in the last video, links is in the description. 10 hours will be solo flight time, 5 hours of those need to be solo cross country time or solo navigation. Also, the instructor will make sure you have at least 2 hours dual instrument time. By the way, all the pilot licenses only allow you to fly under visual flight rules by day, meaning that you need to see outside with certain visibility and cloud-based requirement. If you want to fly in low visibility condition or in cloud or at night, you will need to get instrument rating or light rating. More video about that will be coming soon. Besides, you need to take a general English language assessment if you skip the RPL flight test and go straight to PPL training. Also, you pass a theory exam and the flight test so you can get your perfect pilot license. The main differences between RPL and PPL is that PPL allows you to fly anywhere in Australia while RPL will restrict you to fly within 25 nautical miles. Of course, you can get navigation endorsement for the RPL, but the PPL will open more doors to more endorsements, rating, and other add-on for your flying journey. The third license is Commercial Pilot License (CPL). With CPL, you can fly an aircraft under private and commercial operations. You can even be co-pilot in multi-crew aircraft like Boeing 777, in charter or regular public transport operations (RPT operations). Basically, if you want to become a charter pilot, airline pilot, agricultural pilot, or any other pilot jobs that lead to receiving a payment or salaries, you will need to go for a CPL. To get the CPL, you need to be at least 18 years old learn and pass 7 CPL theory exam, 
which are navigation, meteorology, human factors, flight rules and air law, aerodynamics, aircraft general knowledge, and operation performance and flight planning. The pass mark for all exams are 70%, except air law is 80%. While you're doing all the theory subjects, you will need to complete the flight training. The minimum flight time requirement is 200 hours for non-integrated training course and 150 hours for integrated training course. 100 hours of those need to be solo flight for non-integrated training course and 70 hours for integrated training course. Again, the instructor will make sure you have at least 10 hours dual instrument time. After you pass all the theory exams and completed the flight training, you can attempt the flight test. Once you pass it, you will get your CPL. The fourth license is Air Transport Part License ATPL. With ATPL, in addition to private and commercial part license privileges, you can be the pilot in command or the co-pilot of any operations such as private, commercial and RPT operations. To get the ATPL, you need to be at least 21 years old, hold a CPL, learn and pass 7 ATPL theory exam, which are air law, human factors, navigation, meteorology, flight planning, performance and loading, and aerodynamic and aircraft systems. Similar to CPL theory exam, the pass mark for all exams are 70%, except air law is 80%. The minimum hours for an ATPL is 1,500 hours, 500 hours as part in command, 200 hours for course country, 100 hours of those as part in command, also 75 hours instrument time, 45 hours of those will need to be in flight. Once you have the required flight experience, complete the flight training and an approved course for multi-crew cooperation training, then you can attempt the flight test, which is conduct as an IFR operation in a multi-engine turbine power aeroplane or in an approved flight simulator. Once you pass it, you get your ATPL. Basically, you will only want and need ATPL when you're working in an airline or a flying company which operate under RPT operation. Overall, you have the options of RPL, PPL, CPL, and ATPL. So, now you know what part licenses you can go for. Let's talk about how much it costs for the flight training. For RPL, you require a minimum of 25 hours. But sometimes, the flight hours could vary. The average hours for most students are 30 to 40 hours. It depends on the frequency and consistency of your training. The cost per flying hours with an instructor is around $350 to $600. That depends on the aircraft type you're flying. If you're learning in a Piper Cherokee, it's cheaper. If you're learning in a Sirius SR20, it's very, very expensive. And also the location. If you're learning in Sydney or Melbourne, it could be cheaper because it's more competitive market there. If you're in Darwin, it could be expensive. So let's say you aim for 30 hours to complete the RPL in a Piper Cherokee. That will be 30 hours times $350, which is $10,500. As I mentioned in the last video, you can pay as you go. So you don't need to pay $10,000 in one go. Each lesson will be around one to one hour and a half long. So you will pay around $350 to $525 after each flight. I do suggest you to save up enough money for the first 15 hours so you can fly frequently like twice a week to keep your muscle memory going. Moving to the PPL, you require a minimum of 40 hours. Since part of the 40 hours is actually training for RPL, so 40 hours minus 25 hours for RPL, the minimum hours required is 15 hours for the navigation for PPL. The average hours for most students is 15 to 25 hours. So let's say you aim for 15 hours to complete the navigation training for the PPL, the extra cost will be 15 hours times $350, which is $5,250.
Each navigation lesson will be longer than RPL lessons. It's between two to three hours. So you will pay around $700 to $1,050 after each lesson. Moving to CPL, you require a minimum of 200 hours. You can actually hire the plane with a lower cost since you already have a PPL and you won't be under supervision by an instructor. So 200 hours minus 40 hours for the PPL, you need extra 160 hours to reach the flight time requirement. Let's say you reserve 40 hours to fly with an instructor to get you up to CPL standard. You will need 120 hours solo time. Cost for private hire is around $250 to $350. So overall, you need $30,000 to build your solo time. Then $14,000 for the drill training with an instructor. In total of $44,000. For ATPL, you only build your hours with your part job. Overall, it's quite scary when you hear all the numbers about the cost for flight training. But if you budget it properly, it's not impossible. So, now you have some idea what part license you want and how much it costs for the flight training. To kickstart your flying journey, I suggest you to book a child flight at a nearby flying school. Is normally around 30 minutes to one hour. It's a good opportunity for you to have some flying experience before you commit to the flight training. If you have a bit more budget, I suggest you to try in a few more flying school to compare your overall experience, not just the flying, but also the customer services, the facility, the aircraft condition, the instructors, the pricing, the location, etc. Do more research and compare the experience you have in different flying school. It's very important for your future training. It could save you time and money. After the trial flight, then you can start budgeting for the flight training. Eventually schedule for a few flying lesson and off you go. That will be it for this video. If you find this helpful, give it a thumbs up and comment down below for any questions or anything you want to say. And subscribe to this channel. I will post every week. All the important links are down below in the description. I will see you next week. Bye.